Retrofit has been a company that has sent us multiple products in the past to review, and a lot of the stuff they send in has been really cool, but one thing I was really excited about was brand new recreation carts of older video games that took a bunch of classic series and merged them together into one cartridge. But now, they've got something new. These things. What you're looking at right here are two new classic recreations of old video games, but this time they're in collector's kits with a whole bunch of stuff inside. Let's take a look. Let's start off by taking a look at R-Type 3 and Super R-Type Collector's Edition. The box that contains everything is made of a rigid type cardboard that feels fairly sturdy. The first thing you'll be met with inside is a certificate of authenticity, listing this as a limited run of 2,900. Under that, you'll find two pages of stickers, an R-Type branded hardcover notebook, and two metallic pins that are in the shape of the R9A Arrowhead, which is the spaceship that you fly in R-Type. You also get a selection of art prints that are not from the video game, but in fact, they're from an anime that is a Available on YouTube. It was an independently created one by Paul Johnson over at Audit King 77077. If you want to take a look at his channel, you'll find a link in the description below. And the final item you'll find in here is an SNES style box. Now inside here you'll find a copy of the game, but the box itself feels pretty much like the original Super Nintendo boxes did, which is to say that they probably wouldn't last very long out in the open. With that in mind, you do get a little bit of a plastic insert that holds the game in place so it doesn't just fall over the place that wasn't typical with original Super Nintendo releases. You also get a full color manual, and well, the cartridge itself is fairly rigid. It feels really well made and it is on black plastic, and what's kind of interesting is that on the back where you typically would have seen Super Nintendo information and Nintendo copyright stuff, well, that isn't there anymore. Now you just have another picture of the R-Type ship. And that's basically it. It's a fairly simple look, but how do the games play? This single cartridge has both of the R-Type games included on it. Super R-Type itself plays just like it originally did, which is to say, not that great. It has a lot of slowdown and there's a lot of visual issues that happen because of that. The game fairly plays good, but it's not really the best game in the series if you ask me. Personally though, I really like the other game that was included in here, which is R-Type 3. Now this game is a lot more fun, it makes use of Mode 7 graphics, and has a lot more interesting gameplay mechanics going on. All in all though, these play pretty much exactly like they originally did on their original cartridge releases in North America. Now these games weren't really rare or very hard to come by, but they are a cool way to play them nowadays, especially if you want to both of them on a single cartridge. As I've mentioned in the past with other Retropit cartridges, having a whole bunch of games in a single series kind of combined together on a single release like this is just nice. It's a great way to play the game, and honestly, for a lot of people out there that may have missed these originally, just a very easy way to play them. Next up is Holy Diver Collector's Edition. Now just like the other box, you get a certificate of authenticity, some art prints, some stickers, a hardcover notebook, and you also get those two pins just like the last time, only in this case, one of the pins is a lot bigger and comes in its own plastic hard shell case. But what's important about this game is that Holy Diver on the NES was never actually released. This was only released in Japan on the Famicom, so this is the first time this has ever made it to North America. You'll find the game cartridge itself inside of an NES style box. But what's interesting though is that the artwork on here is the same artwork that they would have had on the original Famicom release. But they did change a couple things. For one, at the very bottom of the image they kind of cut off an area where the main character seems to be stepping on a dragon stuck in some kind of globe. I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's no longer there, and on the very top there's an emblem just below Holy Diver. The emblem on the original Famicom release is far more ornate, but when you take a look at the one that they've created on this, it looks a little bit more simplified. I'm not saying I dislike it or anything, but that's just something to keep in mind. Inside the box, you'll find a full color manual and the cartridge itself. Now, this is a very basic looking design, but I kinda like it. They didn't replicate what you would have found on the box there when it comes to the artwork. Now what you have is that little gold emblem in the dead center with Holy Diver above it. The whole cartridge itself is made of black plastic just like the R-Type release, but it feels fairly sturdy just like that one as well. So the packaging is nice and fairly impressive for a game that really doesn't have a large fan base in North America. But how does this game play? Well, let's take a look. Holy Diver is a video game from Irem released back on the Famicom in 1989 and has absolutely nothing to do with the Holy Diver song by Dio. The gameplay itself is obviously influenced by Castlevania, but it doesn't really feel like a direct ripoff. Many elements of the game play very well, and the overall control is actually surprisingly sharp. 
As was common for the time, the game is very light on narrative or story, which really isn't a bad thing because this game is really just focused on its gameplay. There's no level select or overworld map, you basically start up a stage and go from the beginning to the very end. Something I really like in the game is a collection of magical items. When you find these items in the stages, they give you these certain abilities like being able to jump higher and stuff like that. But unlike other games of the era that would usually make you select those items to activate their abilities, all the items you select are passive abilities, meaning that they're always on so that your character just naturally gets much more powerful as time goes on. But also, by defeating bosses at the end of every stage, you get magical abilities that assist you further in your adventure. For instance, one of the abilities you get is called Blizzard, and it allows you to actually freeze lava in its path, making a perfectly walkable area that you normally couldn't walk over. It's a really neat feature that I think adds a lot more richness to the gameplay, and something I really wasn't expecting from a game of this era. But what was common for this era was the concept of increased difficulty. Difficulty. This game doesn't have any other difficulty other than NES Hard, and you might be okay with it at the very beginning, but there's going to be a lot of gamers out there that are going to find it very difficult to get past stages. But like any good NES game, all you need to know are the really interesting ways to defeat a certain enemy and memorize those things as you go along the way. Certain bosses are more difficult than others, and there's a lot of differences in the way that you actually attack people. But at the end of the day, it doesn't feel like it's necessarily cheap, but sometimes it can just get on your nerves. You can extend your health bar by finding in-game power-ups, you'll get extra lives, but at the end of the day, you probably will lose all those lives at least once, and if you do, it's not the worst thing in the world because you have infinite continues. If you lose a single life, you just start off on the screen that you started on, but if you died, you go all the way to the beginning of a stage, which isn't the worst thing in the world, and honestly, I think it's a little bit more lenient than most other games of its time. Overall though, I really feel like Holy Diver is a game that a lot of gamers are going to really enjoy, especially those that like NES games and that classic NES difficulty. For a lot of others though, you might want to avoid it because, well, it might be just a bit too difficult for you and you might not enjoy it as much as you hoped. But personally, I think it's worth picking up to try out regardless. Both of these collector's editions may not be official releases from Nintendo. And yes, when it comes to R-Type, you can get those two cartridges, even though one of them's a little bit more expensive than the other, but when it comes to Holy Diver, this is the only way to play it in North America on a real cartridge like this. Outside of that, you have to get the Famicom original and get a conversion cartridge in order to play it. This here makes me believe that if you're gonna get a complete collection of NES games, you gotta get this one. It may not be directly from Nintendo, but it is an officially licensed game straight from Irem. I personally think that there's a bunch of gamers out there that collect for the NES and Super Nintendo that are really going to enjoy having these in their collection. Now, maybe not our type because, well, we have seen that get released originally in North America, but when it comes to Holy Diver, this is the only way to play it on the NES. But still, both of these packs are really cool. I really want to thank Castlemania Games for sending these in to us because, well, they're awesome.